Hey everyone, welcome back to Josephine Vegan Kitchen. Today I thought we'd hang out, do a little cooking. I have specifically chosen a few recipes inspired by the fall since it's finally cooling down where we live in Washington. I think according to the forecast it's gonna rain all week so I thought it'd be nice to make some cozy autumnal recipes, things I haven't tried before. Get out of my comfort zone a little. Mornings are starting to get chilly. I've got my big cup of dark roast drip coffee with a splash of oat milk. We're gonna have some savory mushroom toasts on homemade sourdough for breakfast. So I'm actually first going to rewind a little bit to show you some of the sourdough making process from a few days ago. Welcome to the past where I've been preheating my oven at 500 for a little over an hour. The Dutch oven is in there. You want it nice and hot when you put your sourdough in. I've had this guy chilling in the fridge for two days now. I think that's the cool thing about sourdough is like if you're intimidated about all the timing, you can always just slow down the process by using the fridge. So if you've been like on the fence about it, but you're worried, I think the best way to learn is to just kind of dive in. But this has been in there for two days. I'm gonna call in Eric because we have a tradition where I always let him score the loaf. You don't need to use parchment, but I think it helps. You can use like a little layer of cornmeal as well, just to kind of lift it up off of the bottom of the Dutch oven so it doesn't burn. I just use parchment, just nudge him out. Isn't it cute? He's so cute. <laughs> He's like a little baby. I'm gonna add on a little bit of extra white rice flour just to help the, <laughs> thank you. This is our routine. This is what we do this every day. Just gonna add extra white rice flour to make the design have a little more contrast. It's not necessary. Okay. You can use a sharp knife, but we just have little razor blades. I think these work the best. It came with like a, the lom that you can attach it to. I feel like you get more control just using the razor blade. You're up. I'm up? Mm-hmm. Also, can we just acknowledge that you said, uh, welcome to the past, like this is some back to the future <laughs> thing. All right, so I basically just went from this end to the other end, and I just went whoosh, with like a thick, deep cut. When I first started doing this for Sarah's loaves, I didn't do it deep enough and it wouldn't, it wouldn't like spring out enough. For the ear. Yeah, and we wouldn't get that ear that you're gonna see. So I've gotten more confident in really getting deep in there. And then on this side, I just did like, I don't know, I want them to kind of look like leaves. I don't, I'm not an artist. It's gonna be cute. I always get really nervous when I'm transferring the loaf into the Dutch oven. Ooh, like a Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> so it's at 500, I'm gonna put it in, lower the temp to 475 for the first 20 minutes. Then you take the lid off, lower the temp again, and then finish it until it's Dark golden brown. All right, timer just went off. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take the lid off. Yeah. Do you want me to yeah. take it out all the way first? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Your short shorts are making an appearance. Ooh, I'm okay with that. All right, here we go, the big reveal. How do you think it's gonna look? Mm, good. I, I think it's gonna look fantastic. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's good. Cute. We're getting better. Just back in? Back in and 450. 450. All right. While we wait for the bread to finish, I got a little package and I wanted to show you what it contained. I've been wanting to get back into culturing, fermenting things, some, some vegan cheeses maybe. So I got some of this vegan yogurt starter. Mm -hmm. I usually just use like a tablespoon of vegan yogurt or like the contents of a probiotic capsule, but I just wanted to have this. And then I have uh, wheat berries cause I want to try to make rejuvelac, but basically you start to ferment wheat berries or another kind of grain. You can do it with quinoa, I've tried before. I don't really like the flavor of it with quinoa, but you can also use the rejuvelac as a starter for fermenting nuts or seeds. So these are full wheat berries. Mm -hmm. So could, you could make flour out of these if you yeah. wanted to. This mm -hmm. is like the whole, mm -hmm. okay, that's really cool. This is what I'm most excited about. This has like been on my radar for a few years, but I saw someone on TikTok making homemade kimchi she used fish sauce, but she recommended this as a vegan-friendly substitute for fish sauce, and it's yondu. Oh, so it's you told like me about this. A vegetable umami sauce. This is cute. Oh, it's it cute. comes with a whole booklet. It's like a recipe booklet. You can use yondu one for one for fish sauce, or you could use it for dashi. You could use it to make broth or just as a seasoning. Do you know what the first ingredient is? MSG. Mm -mm. What? Organic soybean essence. <laughs> the soul of a soybean. I really like this bottle. Mm -hmm. It kind of just smells like soy sauce. 
It smells like soy sauce. It also smells like fruit juice kind of to me. Should we taste it? It's got like shiitake and leeks and cabbages in there and yeast extract. Super salty, I would mm -hmm. imagine. It's really good though. It does, does it? it tastes like enhanced soy sauce. Oh, it's viscous. Mm -hmm. Isn't Ooh, that delicious? That is good. <laughs> it's like addictive. It's like way too salty to eat on its own, yet yeah, I, you want you want to eat it. I'm into it. <laughs> I'm a cook with that. We just pulled our loaf out. Beautiful, golden brown, crusty. The hardest part of the whole sourdough process is actually waiting for it to cool completely, which you really want to do because if you cut into it while it's still steamy, it tends to have a kind of gummy texture. Onto the cooling rack we go. I'm going to give it at least an hour before we cut into it, but actually I think we're going back to the future for the rest of this uh, mushroom toast recipe. Fire up the DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched Back to the Future. Me neither. I've just, I just read Ready Player One and then Ready Player Two and they reference it like a million times. Should we watch it? Sure. Cool. <laughs> Little close up into the ear. Got some nice bubbles on the surface. This is my favorite part. Yeah. Like the very, like the black part. Mm -hmm. I always rip it. I'm like, can I rip it off? And I rip it off and I dip it in butter and I eat it. Back to present day. We're about to assemble our savory mushroom toast. So we got our bread. It came out really well. I'm very happy with this loaf. Just toasted it in my cast iron skillet with a little bit of butter, so it's nice and golden brown. Then I have these sauteed mushrooms. I just diced up a shallot and a carton of regular cremini mushrooms and sauteed them with a little bit of balsamic vinegar, some soy sauce, a little pinch of thyme, oh, and olive oil. And then the piece I'm most excited about, we're gonna do a little layer of this homemade cultured cashew cheese. This is literally just raw soaked cashews that I blended with just enough water to get everything moving in the blender, as well as a few tablespoons of sauerkraut brine. So it's homemade sauerkraut. It has all the live active cultures in it, and you can use that to inoculate your cashew cheese. Just pop it somewhere warm. Make sure you're using a really nice sterile container cover it so nothing gets in it. Let it sit for 12 to 48 hours. You can taste it. It goes faster if it's warmer out, but it's kind of been chilly here. Then you can just stop fermenting it whenever it's as tangy as you want it to be. So this is like a nice spreadable consistency. You can add like herbs, garlic, make like a scallion cream cheese. I have been smelling this every day for like four days. It smells like cream cheese. It's, it's yeah. I feel like it it's exactly like Kite Hill. Oh yeah, right? I get that. Less expensive than Kite Hill. Mm, it's good, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Maybe later I'll have you doctored up with some spices. It's, and scallions, like you said. Mm -hmm. Scallion cream cheese is my all-time favorite. It almost has like a lightly whipped texture because of the bubbles from the culturing process. Oh, like aerating it? Yeah. Oh, it's nice. All right, I want to take a bite just with the cheese. Mmm. No, it's really good. The bread is so good. And then when you like toast it in a pan like you did. The extra effort of toasting bread in a pan with a little butter, mm -hmm. it's worth it. You're really like man, man spreading. Sorry, I'm just trying. <laughs> over here. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to lean. I'm obsessed with this <laughs> flaky salt. Just adds extra texture. All right, hit I me love with the it. little crunch. Eric doesn't like it. I like the fine salt. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I have like an aversion to like getting a thick <laughs> crunch of salt. That is excellent. You might have to bleep me if you want to. That is f***ing fantastic. It would be even better with some like fancy culinary mushrooms. It's the umami bomb. I'm, I was gonna just, I was gonna use that exact phrase. I'm having like an umami sensory overload, but I like it. I just got off the phone with my dad before we filmed this. He was telling me how his buddy who lives in Oregon forages for mushrooms. And you were just talking about having fancy culinary mushrooms. And I was like, if we forage for some mushrooms out here in the wilderness, but I'm too afraid of, you know, being poisoned to death. You can learn how to grow some. That's true. Coming up with breakfast ideas is always the most challenging thing for me. I'm really not a big breakfast foods person. And I especially don't usually like sweet breakfast. I feel like I want to have like sweet breakfast foods for dessert. No, I think this is a, 
a great alternative if you want a savory autumnal breakfast. Check in for lunch. I really, really so good. If for lunch I want to try something that I saw on TikTok. I seem to be drawing a lot of influence from TikTok lately, but I follow Justine Snacks over on there and recently she made a baked salad with crispy quinoa. So it's essentially just a salad, but the grains are roasted. The greens in question being cabbage and kale. I prepped these yesterday with the cabbage, just a regular green cabbage. I cut it into ribbons, not super thinly shredded or anything. I want it to be like a nice like hearty kind of chunky salad. Oven is preheating to 450. And I'm gonna keep this super simple. I'm gonna toss it with some olive oil, a little salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna roast this for about 20 minutes so that some parts are a little bit crisped, you know? Near the end of the cabbage cook time, I'm going to add the kale. Since it cooks faster, it's not quite as hearty. Now, I also yesterday prepped a batch of quinoa, and the key for fluffy quinoa rather than really like soggy and gummy quinoa is to number one, rinse it really thoroughly. And you'll see in the footage I took, it bubbles up a lot because it has a lot of saponins, which are what cause that gummy, gloopy texture. Rinse all it off as thoroughly as possible, and don't cook it with too much liquid. So our quinoa is really nice and fluffy. Justine in her recipe actually, she recommends using chili oil to coat the quinoa. So I made chili crisp, I think it was in the last video. This is a combination of peanut oil and a bunch of different spices and chili and crispy garlic and shallots and I think a jalapeno's in there as well. I'm just gonna use a little bit of that chili oil to coat our quinoa. I think one reason that I like Justine snacks and TikTok in general, I guess, is that it gets me out of my comfort zone. I'm especially getting a lot of new flavor combination ideas. So I try to get our quinoa into one even layer. Probably have to stir it a few times just to make sure it crisps up evenly. Then for the kale, all I did was remove the rough stalks. I'm a big fan. You guys might know if you saw a few videos back. Big fan of the salad spinner. So I washed it and rinsed it and spun off all the extra liquid in the salad spinner while I wait for the cabbage to get a head start. Before I add this, I'm gonna make a quick vinaigrette. Got some fresh grapefruits in my produce box this week. Into our little mason jar. Some apple cider vinegar. You could use a different kind of vinegar. Red wine, white wine, champagne vinegar. A Little bit of extra sweetness from maple syrup. And then some Dijon mustard, a little bit of salt, pepper, and our olive oil. Just screw the lid on and give it a shake. And that emulsifies all the ingredients together. Yesterday, I also went ahead and prepped some pickled red onions. I love always having these in my fridge just to toss on top of salads or grain bowls. They're tangy, a little sweet, crunchy. They just add some extra texture and flavor. Extremely easy to make. Just thinly slice a red onion. I like to use my mandolin just so they're all very thin, uniform slices. Pop those into a jar. You can also add in some black peppercorns, a sprig of any of your favorite herbs. I added in two whole garlic cloves, just crush them. And then you're gonna heat up a mixture of white distilled vinegar, water, sugar, and salt. You're gonna pour that hot mixture over your sliced onions, let that cool, then pop them in the fridge, and they're ready in a few hours. So we have some delicious pickled onions to add on top of our baked salad. Go ahead and give the cabbage a little toss. I really love when little portions of my roasted vegetables take on that nice color, a little bit of char. In with our kale. And again, just getting the olive oil, salt, pepper treatment. We're gonna try to massage that oil and the seasonings in. Back in the oven for another five to seven minutes. We're taste testing our baked salad. I'm gonna disrupt the beauty. You go first. Mmm. Oh yeah. You like it? Mm hmm Are you getting the spice? Mm-hmm. I used chili oil on the quinoa. Like our chili oil? Mm-hmm. Mm. 
It's a lot of flavors. Oh, it is a little spicy. Mm -hmm. A little picante. Should we make quinoa more often? We really should. We rarely do. Our grains of choice are rice and pasta. Pasta, a grain. Do you think I don't like quinoa is that why? But I do like it, but you wouldn't know that because you don't make it. <sighs> Did you see that? Quinoa, quinoa just, just flew, flew off. off. Are you into this concept? Mm -hmm. Should we do more baked salads? Mm -hmm. Baked salad makes it sound like it's gonna be weirder than it is. It's not actually that weird, but hot salad makes it sound weird. I like that the kale is a little crispy. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a little kale chip action. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like I said with the uh, bread, like I like the browned, the really crispy bits of everything. That includes the kale. If I ever burn something, Eric's like, give it to me. I burned pita chips once in the air fryer. <sighs> so good. Eric's like, these are the best pita chips you've ever made. They were, they were like almost black. Thank you. All right, post-lunch, I've shot a layer because I was baking. I'm just gonna dive right into a little bit of prep for dinner so that we uh, have a bit of a head start later. Honestly, this is not the most realistic day of eating. I normally am not cooking three different things in one day, okay? But I really just wanted to share these three recipes in one video, so. For dinner, we're gonna make a butternut squash lasagna. Instead of red sauce, we're gonna be using a bechamel, so it's gonna be like a creamy white lasagna. I was debating whether I wanted to add like a tofu ricotta in there. I think I wanna keep it, you know, simple and just do roasted squash, bechamel, greens, and then top it with some vegan mozzarella. We have some Violife Mots. No ricotta today. Probably gonna go ahead and mince up a whole head of garlic to add in with the sauteed greens. I peeled, de-seeded, and cubed a butternut squash yesterday. I season a lot of things with just olive oil, salt, and pepper. I think I mentioned this a few videos back when I made butternut squash curry. If you are like intimidated by chopping the hard squashes, you know, acorn squash, butternut squash, I've heard that you can pop it in the microwave for a minute or two and it kind of softens it up, makes it way easier to chop. The oven was still hot from our baked salad. I just turned it down to 400. I'm gonna pop these in there probably for around 30 to 40 minutes. We'll see, I want a little bit of caramelization on our butternut squash. Just gonna go ahead and use my garlic press to work through this whole head of garlic. I really wish that I had thought ahead and just roasted a head of garlic for this. I think that would be really good. Another thing I keep seeing on TikTok that I really keep meaning to try, I have like so many things on my list of food projects that I haven't gotten around to. I feel like I wanna start a series on the channel where I finally make recipes that I've been saying I'm gonna make for like a year. The recipe's garlic confit. You could add it to recipes, dressings. I see people spreading it on toasts, adding it into sauces. That's definitely one that I need to try soon. I'm just gonna use my cast iron skillet and add in my onions. And then I will add in my garlic and my spinach and wilt it down. And I'm just gonna cook it down so the extra moisture evaporates. We got one more prep step we need to get out of the way and it's to make our bechamel for our lasagna. A white sauce, it's made of milk thickened by a roux. For my bechamel, I'm gonna be using homemade cashew milk, just one cup of soaked raw cashews blended with four cups of water till it's as smooth as can be. Feel free to use any kind of unsweetened plain plant milk that you like that you think is gonna taste good in this dish. Personally, I don't really like to cook with large amounts of soy milk, I feel like the flavor of the soy just comes through too much. So I've gone ahead and made our fresh cashew milk. And for the roux, all you need to do is combine equal parts melted butter and flour in a sauce pot. You wanna cook it a little bit just to get rid of the raw taste of the flour, but you don't want it to take on any color. And then you're gonna whisk in your milk of choice and let it thicken. Then you add in just a little pinch of nutmeg. That's the secret ingredient to give it that really distinctive bechamel flavor. I'm calling in Eric for the lasagna assembly. We were gonna make a 9 by 13, but I decided I don't want that many leftovers. So we're gonna use a, I think this is an 8 by 8 pan, and I snapped our 
no boil lasagna noodles. To fit the pan, we got 12 noodles here. We got our roasted squash, our sauteed greens, onions, garlic, big pot of bechamel, and then we have foliar heart parm and my life mozzarella. Can we all just take a moment to appreciate that Sarah called me in for the assembly, which is the most fun part, because she knew I would have fun. <laughs> I don't know if there is a universally agreed upon way to layer lasagna, so I'm just gonna wing it. We always want sauce touching the noodles at all times. All right, I'm gonna do a layer of all the veggies. Separate. <laughs> You're just using your index fingers, <laughs> like pincers. These are the only ones that work. Oh, honey, you thought there was gonna be none of squash, and I think there's gonna be the perfect amount. Look how beautiful that is. Normally I would go mozzarella only on top, but why not? Do one layer of mozz right in the middle with some fall your heart parm. Come on. This is getting tall. The final layer. All right, so we decided to forego the last layer of noodles. This is unlike anything I've ever made. We almost always just make um, like a meat lasagna. Yeah, just like a, a normal, a vegan version of a normal lasagna. This is like a quintessential, you don't need meat or a meat substitute for something to be really, really good. It's just the power of veggies and nuts and Package vegan cheese. <laughs> We're going for picture perfect, right? Yes. How you feeling about that? Bingo bango. That's my what? catchphrase. You know how uh, uh That's not allowed to be your catchphrase. You know how Emerald has BAM! I got bingo bango! You know like that? No. We'll, we'll discuss. We'll work on it. I'll camera. We'll work on it. <laughs> In order to prevent the aluminum foil from sticking to all the cheese, I'm gonna lightly grease it. Doesn't really make sense because cheese is like primarily grease, but I know from experience that it will stick if I don't grease it. I feel like we need one of those casserole sets that like all the moms had in the 90s. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you always find them at the thrift store. They have the little like onions on the side and the glass top. Mm -hmm. So we could just use the lid instead of foil. Remind me, next time. Now we're gonna bake this. I have a confession. It's the next day. We did not eat the lasagna for dinner. <laughs> Cause by the time it was gonna be baked, I was just tired. I wanted to get a head start on cleaning my kitchen cause I exploded it yesterday. So. What do we do? We didn't just get takeout. <laughs> we got two kinds of takeout. We got a pizza from Mod Pizza and we got an order of the Beyond Orange Chicken. Panda <laughs> Express. <laughs> cause they're in the same parking lot. And I was like, what if we did a little bit of this? and it was really, really exceptional. We did bake it yesterday. It does look and smell amazing. You know, I feel like lasagna might be better next day anyway. All the flavors have time to mingle. The microwave is on the floor because we don't have an island in our kitchen, so we had to borrow what the microwave was sitting on to film with. Also, thank you for everyone who left a uh, recommendation for getting the previous owner's perfume smell out of the microwave. A lot of people's recommendation was to just sell the microwave. I feel like the last 24 hours have all been leading up to this moment. I'm scared. It's gonna be too hot. It's hot. It's fantastic. The, the sweetness of the squash comes through a lot. It's just like very hearty and it really does, t it tastes much more autumnal than I thought it would. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't realize the bechamel would make me f think of fall. I mean, just the layering is was done so well. Do you ever put bechamel in regular lasagna alongside? Are you asking me or like in general? Is it done? Does one do it? I honestly have no idea. I thought you'd know. I'm sorry. As a New Yorker. You know, because you're Italian, <laughs> even though obviously I'm not Italian, but when you grow up on Long Island, mm, oh my God. everything has been so off the charts good. Favorite thing we tried? Besides the Panda Express. <laughs> that wasn't in the video. That was behind closed doors. <laughs> the mushroom toast, I knew it was gonna be good, but I didn't think I'd like it as much as I actually did, if that makes sense. So I think that is my is my winner for this video. I think it's the baked salad for me. Really? I'm just such a fan of roasted cabbage. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna roast the rest of the cabbage today. Ooh, yeah. I'll just eat it off the tray. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today and yesterday and a few days ago. 
<laughs> this video has spanned a lifetime. Hopefully it gives you some inspiration though to make some cozy autumnal recipes. If you try any of them out, leave a comment down below or DM us. Tag us in a photo on Instagram. I will try not to be over ambitious with my videos so they're not all this insanely long <laughs> moving forward. I did not intend for it to be almost 30 minutes. We'll see you very soon. Bye. Thanks for watching.